What's up guys? Tonight I'll be painting this Savage R17. It's a bolt action rim fire chambered in 17 HMR. Um, as you can see I've already taped off all the mechanisms and glass, anything that this uh, paint could hinder whatsoever. Um, left the magazine in the well, blocked off that area. Um, just basically covering anything that the paint can hinder. Um, with uh, scopes, I've always tended to put a, either a napkin or a paper towel um, inside against the glass and then I'll rim with tape and then fold it in on the inside. That tends to leave a lot, um, a lot less ugly jagged edges when you peel the tape away after the paint. Um, and with the eyepiece, I folded it on the interior and the exterior of the eyepiece and then cranked it down on itself so that's not going anywhere. Um, if paint um, was to get in here, get sprayed, it gets soaked up and nothing weird happens, it doesn't mess up the glass or anything. I've always done it this way, um, so it, it works for me. It also makes it really easy to uh, peel the tape off, that way you don't have residue um, adhesive on your glass because um, keeping that clear is paramount. So, yeah, next stage we'll be throwing a base coat on. I've got these five colors here. This is a brown color, uh, FDE, um, like a tan, um, like a light, a light green, an olive drab, and then uh, just flat black. I've also got a piece of uh, laundry bag netting that I'll probably utilize to throw some black shadows. Um, over the rest of the flaws so so I'm gonna start with the lighter one because you can always make it darker you can't always lighten it up um, so I tend to start with lighter base coats so just light passes The bigger sweeps you do, it tends to not let uh, the paint uh, beat up and start dripping and stuff like that, or running. So we'll come around to this side now. All right, so base coat is on. I went ahead and threw the bipod on. It's easier to paint it that way. You can just get more done with each run and not have to wait for it to dry but yeah so everything's covered now we're gonna let this dry and then hit it with some stripes and blotches with uh, probably start with uh, some brown color and then um, tie everything in from there okay base coat is dry now I'm gonna hit it with some, some brown here Kind of random, random stripes and blotches here. around to this side. Like kind of randomize it. I don't necessarily need all these to match up. That kind of defeats the purpose of breaking up the pattern. 
trying to break up the pattern, not become a pattern. That's one thing to keep in mind. Definitely help in how well it actually blends in. Got a good amount of brown on there now. Next, after this dries, we'll put some green in with it and it'll start coming together nice. Second coat is dry. I'm gonna go in with some olive drab and fill in some of these this bright sand. After that, we'll hit it with some lighter green. I'm trying to do the best I can with this camera angle. Only got one hand. So I'm gonna free up my second hand and get this done and then I'll show you guys after. All right, next I'm just gonna hit it um, lightly with some lighter green. Um, does a better job at rep representing uh, living uh, leaves and branches. So I'm just gonna merge some of the sand color with the rest of the colors on here with the lighter green now. So I just finished up touching it with uh, some lighter green, as you can see, it's the olive drab, and then this is the lighter green that I've got. Um, it'll dull out a little bit once it dries. Um, I just didn't want the rifle too, too dark. Um, you know, down the area I'm at, there's a lot of uh, vividly bright foliage. You know, the woods down here, full of palmettos, full of shrub oaks, and they stay green year round. Um, also, I'm gonna throw a net over it and, and throw some shadow over it so it'll also darken up a lot of the brighter stuff and help blend it all together. Um, happy with it so far though. It'll be invisible soon. Okay, the last coat's dry now. Um, so, next step is I'm gonna throw this net over it. This is like a, a mesh laundry bag. You can grab these at any any type of, you know, basic home store like Walmart. Publix probably has them too. Um, this is gonna give it a really cool, uh, like a honeycomb type of shadow. Um, it's best to hit it with the darker colors, um, brown or black, it's what I've always done. It's what I like, because as much as I don't want the rifle too dark for my area I also don't want it too bright you know it's dark outside right now so when it's in the daylight and the sun shining all this is gonna be 
pretty bright still. So I'm gonna hit all the light sections with a mist of black or brown and it'll also help blend a lot of the hard edges like all this stuff here so uh, i won't be able to show you the process of that but it's simple you just lay it over like this uh, keep in mind that the tighter it is on the surface the sharper the circles or whatever those shapes are um, will come out and then you know the farther off it is you'll just get like an overspray and it'll be pretty ugly so just try to keep it tight over the stuff if you want that crisp honeycomb look or the kind of like snake skin. Um, but I'm just going to hit hit the light areas and blend it all together. I'll show you after it's done. All right. Last stage is finished with. So you can see we've got some nice netting pattern on there. Just like the rest of it, uh, these dots will fade out a little bit once the paint fully dries. I just got finished spraying it, um, and it'll break up even more, so. I just wanna make sure I don't get too carried away with it. It's easy to just want to keep going, but it's enough to blend the colors together, and when the shadows and the light hits it, it helps it act a lot differently um, than without it, you know. As you can see, even, down here in this area just by changing perspective it it makes it harder for you to you know pick out the patterns and it just kind of flows better so once I take uh, all this tape off and and all this stuff and expose the rest of the gun um, th that'll be the the last step of this process um, and I'll show you guys that so you can just see how it looks you know because some of this stuff will change you know obviously the rim won't be painted you know same with on the back and the bolt over here so it won't change the look drastically but i'll still show you guys the complete finished product after everything is completely dry and i'm done doing any touch-ups that i that i see fit Alrighty, the paint's fully cured now and the tape is already peeled off um and it is done it's ready for the field feel like the uh, netting really put a good finishing touch on everything it helps blend the, the blotches and the rest of the colors together especially when the shadows hit it, it helps it disappear uh, in my opinion this is one of the most versatile patterns that you can put on on any gun no matter where you're at um, it'll kind of help hide you in pretty much any kind of environment as long as you've got bushes and trees um, so it's gonna do me very well uh, in my area now I'll add in a clip of it in some brush also so you guys can see the effectiveness but yeah that's uh, pretty much gonna conclude things for now um, thanks for watching uh, if you guys want to see more videos like this um, this is probably my 10th or 12th rifle painting, so um, I paint most of my weapons, and so I'm going to be doing more in the future. Uh, if you guys want to see some new new ideas, new patterns, then just let me know, because I do them all differently um, for the most part. So yeah, thanks for watching. Go ahead and subscribe.